So, now uh, in this lecture we will talk about relay damping. We have already seen that classical damping of let us say certain percentage of that of the critical is generally applicable if the same amount of damping is distributed throughout the structure. Now, there are two questions can be asked here. What is generally that percentage of damping which is generally assumed in structures? In land based structures generally it is assumed as 5 percent. In offshore structures if it is steel you can take it as 2 to 3 percent. The second question which is asked is how do we ensure that the same amount of damping is distributed throughout the structure. So, this is the first one. The second one to ensure that the same amount of damping is distributed throughout the structure one can check the damping in different modes. So, instead of having a single zeta value, we now have set of zeta values zeta i, where i varies from 1 to n, where n is not the number of degrees of freedom, n is the number of degrees of freedom which you want to include for computation. For example, you may have 15 degree freedom system problem, but you do not want to include all the 15 degrees, you want to include only 3, 4. I will come to the point later how much is the truncation of the modes later, but let us say we decide to include only 3 modes. So, I must ensure that the, dap the damping ratio is almost constant not exactly same it will not be exactly same, but it lies in the closer range in all the modes chosen for your analysis. So, if that happens let us say zeta 1 is about 5 percent, zeta 2 is about let us say 4 percent, zeta 3 is about 6 percent let us say you are in the close range then one can clearly say that the damping is uh, distributed more or less uniformly throughout the structure. Now, one can ask a question indirectly from the second question saying that how do we ensure just by saying zeta is equal in all the modes which are considered for evaluation, how can we ensure that the damping is distributed throughout the structure. Damping is an estimate of dissipation of energy, you give an excitation to the system the system keep on does not keep on vibrating in the infinitely it stops after some time. There may be many reasons for this the first foremost reason is the structure has got a self inbuilt stiffness which will invoke the structure or restore the structure to the uh, recentering capability number one. Number two there can be medium like air water which also exerts external energy which stops the vibration of the system. Now, all this will happen only by stopping the inertia motion of the system, because as you know in case of even d'Alembert's principle, the principle says that if you really want to control the system or write an equation of motion apply equal and opposite inertia force ok that is how d'Alembert's principle is actually based upon. So, when I say the system is vibrating we are worried only about the dissipation or we focus only on the dissipation of the inertia force in the given system. One can say the inertia force should be mass proportional is it going to be significant in offshore structure because mass is significant in offshore structure ok. X double dot may not be for a fixed structure if you talk about a compliant structure X double dot will also be significant, but mass may be compromised mass may not be as high as that of a fixed structure or a fixed platform, but still as we all understand the top side load of a given system cannot be compromised whether your system is floating or semi compliant or compliant or fixed the top side activities which is meant for production drilling all need to be meant ok you cannot compromise on them. Therefore, you cannot really sacrifice a large amount of value in the in terms of mass, but structure can be made flexible. So, x double dot can be larger 
if it is flexible in certain degrees of freedom whereas mass may not be very low but it is significantly present therefore inertia force will be always representative value in a given system. Therefore, if you are able to identify that the zeta distribution is there in all the modes this indicates that modal participation is an indirect representation of the mass points because mode is nothing but the relative displacement of the mass points under any degree of, uh, at any degree of freedom for a given frequency of vibration. Therefore, modes are very closely associated to mass whereas, frequency are not associated to mass alone, but also with the stiffness. Okay. So, if you really wanted to look at the mass proportional discussions instead of looking at the frequency I think one should look at the mode shapes because mode shape will give you uh, a relative display disposition of the mass point for any frequency vibration of the given system. Therefore, if we ensure that the zeta is distributed equally not exactly equal in the range of value for all the chosen modes for your analysis you can always indirectly say that the dissipation of amount of damping available in the system is more or less uniform throughout the entire structure. Okay. That is the reason why we are focusing on motion. Now, the question comes how do we estimate zeta at every mode? If you look at single degree freedom system we know zeta is given by c by c c which is 2 zeta omega n a single value because omega is only k by m only 1 k and 1 m therefore, there is no problem you have only 1 zeta. Whereas, you have got multi degree freedom system you have got different k different m because they are matrices now you have different zetas now. Okay. We must have a policy how to estimate this. Rayleigh has come out with a very interesting discussion on estimate of damping analytical estimates of damping let us see that now. There are two arguments in damping before Rayleigh proposed damping the two arguments are one can be mass proportional damping. We all know damping constant C is now expressed as A0 of M mass proportional damping okay, where A0 is a proportional to constant, but interestingly see the unit for damping coefficient we know it is Newton per meter per second, whereas we say what is the unit of A naught which will be second square. So, the unit of A naught actually is 1 over second. So, it is not a constant though we call this a proportional to constant, but it is got a unit. Okay. Now, how this will be exercised in a given system? Let us say I have a multi story frame. I am taking an example of a building system, it can be even an offshore jacket also let us say number of stories we all know and we all mutually agree that I lump the mass at every floor and I measure the displacement at every floor because there are advantages of doing so in dynamic analysis. So, if you call this as mass 1 to mass n I call this as x 1 to x n. Okay. Now, I want to indicate stiffness will be given by this column members mass points are already there I want to indicate the dash part in the given model the dash part I am indicating symbolically like this. Let us so this is a 0 of m 1 this is going to be a 0 of m. So, there is a proportionality constant which will be multiplied with respect to the respective mass of that floor which imposes some damping value to the system to arrest or to dissipate the energy which is caused because of inertia component of the given system. So, it is proportional to mass only we are not bothered about the restoring capability of the column members which is otherwise imposed by the stiffness of the problem. Okay. So, let us say these mass are all simply tied by anchors or wires and they do not have an axial stiffness etcetera or they are very highly negligible. 
So, I want to impose uh, the damping or dissipation of energy of this particular inertia system for a given vibration of motion uh, for a given vibration of the system. Therefore, I want to calculate or model uh, mass proportional damping in every floor or every degree of freedom as indicated here. Okay. Now, we already know that zeta n is given by C by 2 omega m. So, where in my case C is equal to A 0 m by 2 omega n m. Therefore, A 0 will be actually equal to 2 zeta n omega m consequential number. Alternatively, we know that alternatively zeta n will be equal to a 0 by 2 1 by omega n. On the other hand, for every higher frequency, every higher frequency the damping ratio will be inversely proportional. Okay. So, I can plot this quickly for every higher frequency the damping ratio is inversely proportional. Okay. So, I can call this model as A 0 m model which is mass proportional damping. The second argument what people say is of course, the dissipation of energy exercises stoppage of vibration or control to the response of the vibrating system. This control can be also achieved by recentering capability of the stiffness of the column members. Therefore, the damping now can also be proportional to stiffness alone forget about the mass. Okay. So, stiffness proportional damping. So, now C is going to be equal to A 1 of k. So, C is equal to A 1 of omega square m So, let us say A 1 of k is A 1 omega square m n. So, zeta n is equal to C by 2 m n omega n that is a C n. So, zeta n is equal to A 1 omega n square m n by 2 m n omega n. So, zeta n is a 1 by 2 of omega n. So, for every increase of omega n, zeta n is increasing. So, this model is contradictory to the tough mass because in the mass proportional damping for every increase in omega you get decrease in damping whereas, in stiffness proportional damping for every increase in omega there is a direct increase in zeta. So, if I try to plot this it will look like this. linear one which is stiffness proportional damping. I am deliberately taking the constants as a 0 and a 1 for our understanding. Let us see the units of this. This is Newton second per meter. I want to know the units of a 1 and we know this is Newton per meter. So, a 1 will have units as in second. So, they are, though they are called as damping constants but they have units. Okay. A 0 has units in second to the inverse or s power minus 1 whereas, A 1 has units directly as seconds. 
So, here there are two contradictory models one is decreasing with increasing omega n other is increasing with increasing omega n. Okay. Now, people measure damping experimentally also where a hybrid representation of dissipation of energy which is occurring from the mass contribution and also from the stiffness contribution because the platform is existing or a structure is existing if you try to give a free vibration to it the structure will come to stand still after some time you can keep on measuring the envelope by giving an unit displacement initially and we know how to get the ratio logarithm decrement we know zeta. So, people experimentally evaluated zeta and found that it is neither mass proportional nor stiffness proportional on the other hand to be very specific it was not decreasing with increasing omega at the same time it was increasing with increasing omega also there has been a mixture of this. So, Rayleigh found out that and proposed a new model for damping which is very well applicable to offshore structures there are two reasons for this. So, Rayleigh proposed a model like this is what he has proposed. Our argument actually was to ensure that the damping is effectively there in the analysis we must ensure that dissipation of energy is distributed throughout the structure that is called classical damping. Okay. And we also said in the beginning of the lecture that if you want to ensure this you must check that the damping ratio in different modes are almost equal. So, look at here this equation for a specific value of zeta for any specific value of zeta let us say zeta i you will get 2 omegas <coughs> if for two vibrating frequencies if you are able to get the same damping ratio it is understood that this is representing the classical damping of both mass and stiffness proportional. Okay. And this also ensures that the dissipation of energy is uniformly distributed for the entire structure. Now, here I have shown only omega 1 and omega 2 if you want to take omega 3 you must prove that omega 3 which is also closer to omega 1 or omega 2 etcetera all the 3 or all the 4 or all the n frequencies more or less have the same damping ratio. Okay. If you are able to show that then the model from which you will estimate C because this is going to be C is it not? This is going to be the C matrix if K and M are matrices. The model from which you will estimate C can be used in the structure analysis for finding out the response of the system because this is now going to be a representation of the mass proportional and stiffness proportional hybrid damping whereas none of them worked individually for offshore structures. Okay, so, we want to go for a combination. So, Rayleigh suggested this and there is a very popular model which is used for buildings and as suppose there are some literature there are some researches where people applied this model for estimating C. You will see most of the dynamic papers in offshore structures will always assume C as classical damping which is 2 percent or 5 percent of that of the critical. Okay. But Rayleigh showed that the classical damping of either mass proportional or stiffness proportional that is what 2 zeta omega n means omega and m are combinations of m and k they do not work. Okay. So, you cannot simply have a percentage of that order you must ensure that that damping ratio what you consider in the analysis should be uniform distributed for the entire structure you have to show that. So, estimate C after finding a 0 and a 1 contributions for on m and on k respectively 
if you use that c instead of 2 zeta omega m model then that will ensure that the dissipation is uniform throughout the entire structure. Now, the question is how do you get a 1 and a 2 or a 0 and a 1 m and k I know we all know that how to get m and k by this time ok. For a given problem you should know generally in all the exercises I have given you the last lectures I have given you m, but I have made you to work out k at least ok. In the next module where f s i is dealt we will tell you how to calculate m and how to calculate k or derive k also. So, you will have a good idea how do we get these matrices k and m and how do we calculate a 1 and a naught if I tell you this using Rayleigh's model then one can propose a new damping matrix which is classically adopted for offshore structures because it is an hybrid combination of or hybrid representation of mass and stiffness. One can ask me a question why in offshore structures one should go for an hybrid combination of mass and stiffness. In land based structures the system is very flexible for example, talk about a thin electric pole of diameter may be 100 millimeters steel, but length of the pole is about let us say 6 7 meters the system is very highly flexible. So, when the system is highly flexible recentering of the tower under wind action to come to the equilibrium position is practically impossible because it is very thin. So, if at all it has to come it has to come only based upon the tip mass of the system. So, it is mass proportional damping or imagine a building with columns of 600 600 square the building does not vibrate at all because the column has got very high bending stiffness. So, even try to push the column using an earthquake or an wind load the structure recenters automatically because though the mass is also there, but stiffness invoked or recentering capability invoked by the columns or stiffness based damping is very significantly representative in the building. Therefore, they come to recentering position. So, dissipation of energy takes place. So, in these kinds of structures either mass or stiffness proportional damping may work out, but in offshore structures since we are talking about compliant platform and hybrid structures for the recent invention in deep water and ultra deep waters. We are talking about a system where the superstructure is massive, but the substructure is highly flexible. So, if it is flexible, invoking a stiffness based damping is not a successful idea. If it is not very massive, invoking a mass proportional damping is not a very good idea. But system is an hybrid combination of both because the system is designed in such a manner only about 3 frequencies are very light or very low, and 3 frequencies are very high, for example, TLP. In surge sway and yaw the periods are very high close to around 100 whereas, in roll pitch and heave the periods are close to around 2 to 5 seconds. If the periods are low omega is very high because it is inversely proportional to omega. So, we have got two distinct combinations either a very high omega or a very low omega. So, I must work out using both the combinations I should not look only either of them because they will not work I have got both the combinations present in the system. So, I am looking for an hybrid model proposed to be really therefore, this damping matrix which is proportional mass and stiffness is a very useful and intelligent application for offshore structures where you are talking about complaint systems. When you talk about let us say fixed type offshore structures where it is mass proportional or stiffness proportional may work out like buildings because the response given by the system or response shown by the system and the lateral action of waves and winds etcetera may be very less it is insensitive whereas, those kind of structures are not in the motion uh, not in the uh, uh, let us say practice of evolving because we are looking for structures which can suit exploration in deep and ultra deep waters ok. So, in that case I must look for a system which can have a representative combination of both mass and stiffness. So, the problem rounds out to understand or make me to understand how do we get a 0 and a 1. Okay. But it is very clear if you want to employ this model you must have the damping ratio constant at least for 2 frequencies. Okay. So, I must so if any problem is applied I must show in the problem for omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 zeta is almost equal if I show that then this model is accepted to me. Okay. So, let us see 2 things 1 how to estimate a 0 and a 1 derive then take an example and show how omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 or having zeta 1 zeta 2 zeta 3 almost equal if we show that then the problem is solved ok let us do that now. So, now to get to obtain a 0 and a 1 constants 
So, I put the word constant here, but they are dimensionally have some units. Okay. Let us for our derivation we call this as omega i and we call this omega j instead of 1 and 2 we say omega i and omega j. So, can I write here as zeta i comma zeta j because zeta is same though there are two frequencies. Remember these frequencies are projected from the yellow line not neither from white nor from the line say projected from the yellow line okay, that is the relay model. So, omega i and omega j two frequencies, but whether I call them as zeta i or zeta j is practically going to be same is going to be a 0 by 2 1 by omega i because we know this. Let us say zeta j is a 0 sorry a 1 omega. Let us write down this in matrix form zeta i zeta j 1 by 2 is common anyway. So, 1 by omega i omega j 1 by omega j ah, this is omega j. zeta i is 1 by omega i by 2 plus a 1 a 1 by omega i because zeta i will have contributions from omega i and omega j both. Similarly, zeta j will also have contribution of omega i and omega j both. Okay. I call this matrix as A matrix, some matrix. So, if you really wanted to find the constant vector A0 and A1, I will invert this matrix, multiply this to this value, I will get A0 and A1. Okay. These values are known to me, or I assume them 2 percent, 3 percent by trial and error I will assume because you do not know from this behavior at what percentage of zeta you get 2 omega say you do not know because if you say mistakenly select this you get only 1 omega. Okay. So, you have to select the zeta and according value so that you at least get 2 omegas. So, you have to assume this it means this is known to me for a value of zeta and zeta j known to me or zeta known to me. I can easily find this because I know for a given system omega and omega j I can use there are 5 methods available to me I can easily find out them and use this and get. Let us see the equations of a 0 and a 1 can you invert this matrix and try to get me a 0 and a 1 value quickly it is 2 by 2 matrix you have to invert this matrix and try to get a 0 and a 1 I write down the values here a 0 and a 1. So, these are the two values. We call this equation number 3, this is equation number 2. So, I write here by inverting A and multiplying with zeta 1 zeta 2 vector, we get. Please check whether we are really getting this you have to get this it is very easy I am not showing it here but please complete that here I can wait for a minute complete that you must get this this is please correct this please correct this equation. So, once you know this C can be easily said as a 0 m plus a 1 k C is because a 0 and a 1 are known one may ask a question how do we know a 0 and a 1 omega i and omega j are known to me I assume zeta okay. therefore, I know these two constants I know the mass matrix and k matrix I will substitute them get the C matrix.
which I will use for my analysis. So, we will take up an example problem and show how this can be proved. So, let us take a 3 degree freedom system. all these three values are m where m is equal to 3500 kg this is k1 this is k2 and k3 is equal to 1.5 k1 where k1 or k is equal to Thousand five hundred kilo Newton. So, what is asked is very interesting. Consider five percent damping for first and second mode. Compute zeta for the third mode. That is what we want to know. So, one can use many methods to compute omega and zeta, I mean omega and phi. So, let us say I have the values. This is 0.57 root k by m, which is 0.57 of this is 1500 into 1000 because SI units for stiffness is Newton per meter. If mass is in kg, so I get 11.8 radians per second. Please check. This is 29.27 radians per second, 1 minus 1 and 1. Both there is only one zero crossing, there is only one zero crossing. Third one is forty four point seven seven eight and the mode shape is four point six eight. These are me frequencies and mode shapes. Now, let us say for using this equation of A 0 and A 1, I want mass matrix and stiffness matrix. Mass matrix I have, I can directly write which is M of in so many kgs, we know this. M is given to me as 3500 kg, this is the mass matrix. Stiffness matrix I do not know. So, I have to write the equation of motion for this and get the stiffness matrix. Let us quickly do that.
ok. So, m 1 x 1 double dot should be equal to minus of x 1 minus x 2 m 1 x 1 double dot plus k x 1 minus k x 2 is 0 is the first equation. So, let us say is that ok? Of course, I can remove this and substitute. into 1500 kilometer per meter. I can remove this and substitute 3500. So, I get mass and k. So, I have the equation for a naught and a 1. I have m and k substitute and try to get the value of a 0 and a 1 quick. Get me the a 0 and a 1 value. Now, a 0 is given by 2 omega 1 omega 2 that is i j and omega 1 plus omega 2 of 0 0.05 because I am assuming 5 percent. So, what are the values of this 2 of what is omega 1 I forgot I rubbed it huh? 11 point into omega 2. Can you give me the value of A 0? Let us write A 1. Eight four one. Okay. Now, C is A 0 m plus A 1 k, where m and k are matrices and C will also be matrix. So, can you get me the C matrix? So, C matrix you can check up the value, I am writing it here.
That's the value. So, let us check zeta n. A 0 by 2 1 by omega n plus A 1 by 2 omega n. That is the general equation for zeta n. Now, I want to check zeta 3. A 0 we know the value, it is 0 0.841 by 2. I know omega 3. What is omega 3? A 1 is 2.43 10 power minus 3 by 2 or 44.77. Can you give me what is the value of zeta 3 in percentage? 6 point? 6 point? You see it is more or less equal. We started with 5 percent for zeta 1, zeta 2, I am getting 6 percent in zeta 3. So, now this model of C would ensure uniform distribution of dissipation of energy with the entire structure, because all the three modes has more or less the same damping ratio. So, Rayleigh model will propose you this kind of hybrid mixture of mass proportional and stiffness proportional damping which is a very powerful tool to apply to offshore structures because the new generation offshore platforms are both capable of recentering as well as mass proportional damping. So, you can use this model and it has been experimentally also determined for offshore structures that the damping ratio does not decrease with increase in frequency, the same thing does not increase with increase in stiffness. Both of them do not agree. So, there is a mixture. So, this model will try. To. So, your worry was how to estimate C for a given system k and m are known to me. If you know C for a damped vibration frequency or damped vibration system you can always find the response. We have the standard equations available with us, we can do that. So, you will see most of the focus in research papers and dynamic analysis will focus only on estimating of mass k and C and they will go on to a numerical method maybe in Umax beta or some, some other algorithm to estimate x of t. Okay. So, we will talk about that later as an applied problem in second module, but let us know how to estimate these three characteristics of equation of motion that is how to estimate a mass matrix, how to estimate a derived a stiffness matrix or how to derive an influence coefficient matrix from where we can derive a stiffness matrix and how to get a yeah, acceptable model of a C matrix. It is never proportional to 2 zeta omega n. Okay. So, it is having contributions from mass and stiffness both. So, it is a very interesting and very valid example. You will find this kind of application very rare in the present scenario and research in offshore structures. People still use classical damping. Okay. This is a new idea where people generally propose this and it is a very interesting proposed by Anil Chopra. So, it is a good model. So, I think this is uh, useful and I have applied this in some of the examples in TLP. It works out very well and uh, the damping estimates are reasonably good compared to experiments. So, this model is good and this how a new area of research has been introduced to you for estimating C matrix. Thank you.